Blair, thank you so much for uh, making the time to come out on our podcast. For any of our listeners who don't know about iMed Pharma, would you mind telling us a bit more about the company and about you um, as part of the company? Yeah, so iMed Pharma is a Canadian dry eye focused company. We've been in the market or we've been in Canada uh, making medical devices uh, for over 30 years now. Um, we're well known for our drops and uh, our uh, dry eye drops, which are the eye drop, uh, you know, and the latest one, eye drop MGD, which is a really great success. The first uh, kind of preserved, non-preserved uh, multi-dose um, drop with a lipid contained in it. So really, really fabulous drop. Lots of good feedback on that. And, uh, you know, we just continue to kind of develop new products for dry eye as we go forward. And we're really focused on the dry eye kind of market in Canada um, and looking always to develop new products and, and new things to help patients with dry eye. And that's why we brought uh, IMED onto our podcast because we love, well, us three, Deepon, Rav and I love <laughs> using the IMED products um, for all of our dry eye patients and on ourselves. And um, it was, we were really excited for Alex to actually get some samples of the products in Alaska. So yeah. um, yeah, <laughs> definitely talk more about. I it. even have them here. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I think that, I think the biggest thing with IMED is that we're really focused on the kind of science side of things. So we don't we don't necessarily go with the marketing things. We we look at really the science approach, uh, look at what works, uh, understand what what will work on patients, and and really go uh, go kind of the science route without kind of all that marketing hype around it. Yeah. Um, so that's really, and, and I think it pays off and, and patients really see the difference in the, in the end product. So I, I think you guys have tried them out and you, like you said, you, you've used them quite yeah. a bit and uh, I don't know, Alex, your first time using them. What was your, uh, what was your kind of feedback or what, what was your reaction? I did like them. I felt like it definitely did help, especially up here during this time of year. It's not very good. <laughs> <with the dryness. laughs> that's it. That's it. Canadian, you know, it's, it's great. It's a great climate for dry eye, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's, yeah. Exactly. So like uh, the Northern hemisphere, you know, in Northern Canada, everywhere in Canada, pretty much uh, during the winter, especially yeah. so dry. Especially so Alberta. I feel oh, like gosh. Alberta during the winter is some next level dryness. So I moved <laughs> from Ontario to Alberta and during the winter time, my skin, my eyes, um, they, my skin like cracks. I have to like moisturize my skin twice a day and I carry like the eye med drops in my bag. I'm always Absolutely. putting drops in my eyes. Well, we're going to dive into the first installment of this iMed episode. So like you mentioned, iMed is all about dry eye disease. Um, and there are so many products that we can talk about all day about iMed. But um, the IRPL device, the EI, is really what we want to dive into today with you. Um, and so the EI, um, for all of our listeners, is the first medical device that uses IRPL technology specifically designed to treat dry eyes due to meibomian gland dysfunction. So Blair, how does IRPL work and how is it different from IPL? Yeah, so I would say, first off, this, this device has been on the market for over five years now outside of Canada and just, just arrived in Canada this, uh, actually in 2020. Um, and it's, you know, over 1,500 devices out there in the world. Uh, and used specifically for dry eye disease and my and gland disease. And um, really what's special about this device is the IRPL has kind of three modes of action where most other IPLs have kind of two modes of action. So the first mode of action of most IPLs is, is kind of the heating aspect. So that when you're doing the, the light pulses, kind of light heating of, of the gland area in general, so that warming will kind of loosen up the mybum a little bit. The second um, uh, kind of mode of action that most IPLs have is really the treatment of the inflammation. And that's what most kind of IPLs, uh, you know, main mode of action is, is the, you know, as you know, dry disease is an inflammatory disease as well. So reducing the inflammation all around the eye area and all the, the whole system there kind of breaks that vicious circle that you get with dry eye disease where the inflammation causes dry eye and the dry eye causes inflammation and it's just a vicious circle. So the, that second mode of action, the reduction of the inflammation really helps that kind of break that cycle. 
And then the third mode of action, which is unique to the uh, EI device is really um, the stimulation of the parasympathetic nervous system. So the parasympathetic nervous system that's right below your, your kind of eye is all connected to the meibomian glands. And by using the EI, you're stimulating that nervous system and it really gets the meibomian glands working again. So if you kind of think about it, you've got the inflammation, you're reducing the inflammation, but if you don't really fix the root cause, which is the meibomian glands aren't working, you're gonna end up with inflammation again. So what, what this does is it, you get a lot better longer term results with the EI because you're fixing the inflammation one, but then you're also fixing the whole system, which is getting the meibomian glands working again and, and pumping properly and ex expressing good meibom. And that, that gets you the longest kind of solution for, for a lot of the patients and shown in many, many studies around the world. This is one of the devices that I think has been the most studied from an, from an IPL point of view or IRPL point of view. Very, very robust studies with people like Jennifer Craig, who's, if you look on the DOOS2, she's one of the top person, you know, in all the DOOS2. Jennifer Craig has done two fa fantastic studies showing great results with this, where she's actually, her first study, she didn't believe the device worked. So she went out to prove that it wouldn't work and actually was surprised at the results and amazed at the results, had done a subsequent new study just came out uh, recently where it was, you know, very, very robust in terms of shams, in terms of uh, the way that they went about the protocol so that it was, uh, it was, it was, you know, very, very high uh, ethical and, uh, and practice standards uh, to, to kind of show that the device worked beyond a doubt. So uh, very, very interesting from that point of view. Yeah. Would you mind uh, going a little bit more into detail about how does the IRPL activate the parasympathetic nervous system specifically mm -hmm. and how IPL might not do that? Um, Action. Yeah, so so what it does is it's it's going and your your nervous system kind of runs underneath here. Mm -hmm. um, the actual how it's stimulating the nervous system, it's kind of heating up that nervous system, and it's in the pulses that they're using. So the okay. pulse specific pulses that they're choosing are kind of really going forward and and activating that nervous system and getting it to kind of stimulate that that nervous system. And and actually, what's really interesting as well is that. Um, you know, your nervous system, uh, parasympathetic nervous system runs the top and the bottom. Well, you have uh, glands at the top and bottom, and, it, mm -hmm. and it's kind of branched off on the side right here of your uh, of your eyes. If you're not, you know, I guess, on the uh, podcast, you wouldn't see, but on the uh, temporal kind of area, uh, the branch kind of connects. And uh, for the EI, you do uh, four flashes on the lower uh, orbital region, then one on the temporal side that actually connects the, the top and actually activates the top glands, oh, uh, which is really interesting. So you get, you get actually, um, you know, full stimulation of all the glands and, and, uh, reduction of everything by the, the kind of temporal. So they did a bunch of tests early on showing that there was no real benefit to doing upper and lower lids, uh, with the EI, you could get as good, and, and actually the same uh, results with lower and just the temporal side. So there's five flashes in total when you're doing it on either side. That makes so much more sense now because every time my rep did the IRPL sessions on me, I always wondered why he flashed like my temple. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> my exactly IRPL. that. And it's the, it's the branch where, where mm -hmm. kind of the lower and the upper connect and you're really getting that upper uh, upper lid to be able to activate. It's, it's interesting that you're, you know, that's where you kind of think about it and the, the upper lid, you're never actually yeah. flashing on the upper lid, but you're getting benefits from it. So, which is, yeah. you know, uh, there's a lot of things that, you know, we're, we're still trying to understand all the different um, modes of action and how they're working behind the scenes, but mm -hmm. the results really show, you know, uh, for themselves that, uh, that you're getting the, the benefit, uh, you know, when you look at tear breakup time, uh, expression scores, um, you're looking at all those, you know, OSDI scores over time, the patients, you really, really see a huge yeah. benefit uh, from that point of view. Um, cool. So Blair, kind of going back to um, changing the function and the structure of the meibomian glass that you were talking about earlier, does IRPL mm -hmm. have the ability to change the microstructure of the meibomian glands where atrophied glands can be regenerated? Yeah, so that for sure, well, from what we've seen so far, there is no way to get atrophied glands mm -hmm. back. So once they're gone, they're gone. 
Um, but what you do do is you, you know, for people that have a high percentage loss of glands, this will make the glands remaining work properly and work as mm -hmm. much and as good as possible so that you're expressing myobum and, and really being able to, um, you know, have that lipid layer across the, uh, the, surface of the, the tear that's so important for evaporation. So I think in, in many cases where people have a lot of loss, these, it's still a good uh, alternative to really being able to get them, uh, you know, to have mybum that's going to express properly from the remaining glands is what we've seen a lot in the studies. You know, uh, um, I would say there's nothing really yet that has shown anything to bring back uh, atrophied glands, unfortunately. Yeah, we started doing a lot of um, lippy scans at one of our clinics, and that's a great way to show our patients um, the atrophied glands. And you tell them, be like, okay, these are the glands that are gone, and there's no way of bringing them back. So at least the ones you have, we can keep those, right? And it, absolutely it's a good way for them to understand because when you tell them, oh, you have these glands on our eyelids, they don't, they can't picture it. Yeah. And when they Absolutely. see the pictures of those long glands and you compare it to the normal glands, then they're like, oh, wow, like my glands are bad. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I, I, I find with patients, you really have to show them the, the yes. kind of data to be able to convince them, right? They, they say, oh, yeah, my eyes are feel tired or, you know, they're, they're, you know, uh, feel gritty or, you know, I have uh, problems, you know, I have to blink more, whatever it may be. I use drops a lot. Um, you know, but they, once you connect it with, here's, here's what this photo looks like of, of mm -hmm. atrophy glands, here's what you are in terms of the, you know, the scale, the put scale or whatever it might be, yeah. um, you know, you're, you're at 50% uh, loss, you know, wow, that's scary. You've only got 50% mm -hmm. less left, uh, you better take care of them. So mm -hmm. that's, that's one thing. Showing them tear breakup times, I find is really good too, to be able to explain here, you should be 10 seconds or above. Your, your tear is breaking up too quickly. You, you don't have the right mybum, you know, being able to be expressed that's going to keep it from evaporating within that time frame, And that's what's causing your dry eyes. So being able to kind of relate and, and you know, dry disease, multifactorial disease, it gets complicated quick, but bringing mm -hmm. it back to kind of the main key factors, are you producing enough liquid, you know, is the aqueous port, is it aqueous deficiency or is it, is it evaporative and, and kind of understanding and, and being able to explain them uh, where they sit in, in kind of the dry eye spectrum, because it is, I mean, it's so varied. You can yeah. go from one edge to the other and everybody's got some, some different portion of it in, in one aspect and being able to explain it to them, I think is, is very important, especially when you've got to explain to them, here's, here's a device, uh, you know, it, it can be relatively expensive compared to other treatments, mm -hmm. but will get you the benefits and being able to then put them in a line in the sand. Here's where you are today. We're going to start the treatments and then show them how they progress as well, which is really, I think, uh, important in this, you know, tear breakup time. That's one thing where doing a, a mybography at the beginning, from the beginning to the end, it won't change. The mybography won't change, but mm -hmm. your tear breakup time will go up. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to show them here from, from the beginning, you were at maybe four seconds or three seconds. Uh, tear breakup time and now you're at 11 you know you're mm -hmm. past that that kind of dry uh, spectrum so we've improved it or expressibility score whatever it may be I think it's really important that, to show that as well oh man if my tear breakup time could be 10 seconds <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. Uh, uh, is performing my and gland expression after each treatment necessary uh, I, it's not necessary, but I think in what we've seen from a lot of the studies and, and in many of our, uh, our, our people that have them in Canada now using them, you get a bit better results quicker in terms of if it's, a, it's just say a regular patient, if you weren't to express, you're still going to get the results. Uh, but that first and second treatment, I think, is where it really helps to do the expression. Mm -hmm. And most of the time we just say, yeah, express at the same time. It's not going to hurt anything. If you're doing, you know, the, a lot of the EI studies some of them were done without expressing to show specifically that the EI worked without expressing to show that the device was specifically working and there was no other influence in it. But it doesn't mean in your practice, you should do that necessarily. I would say put every, you know, everything on your side, uh, especially people with MGD, usually their myobomian glands are clogged. There's issues there. 
uh, getting, you know, expressing them is only going to kind of help that progression quicker and get them flowing again. So I think it's a it's a good practice to express, um, you know, uh, glands while you're doing the treatments. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would also help with like instant um, relief too, and like instant results. So that also helps them realize, oh yeah, it actually is doing something for me. Absolutely, yeah. They'll they'll feel the difference. Well, even with the EI, the first couple of treatments, you'll you'll feel the benefit kind of. Like Deepan was saying, you'll you'll notice that hey, I don't need to put drops in as much anymore. So you get that that kind of instant treatment. Mm -hmm. The difference, and you, and you know, we were talking about that three different treatments are really important because the first treatment sometimes it won't last necessarily that long, and you need to do all three kind of let's call let's call them sessions. You need to do the three sessions, and that's really the treatment. Uh, so three to four sessions, and the first treatment, I, I, depending on the patient, could last a couple of days to maybe a week. You come back two weeks after, it'll last a little bit longer that next time. And then the third treatment, uh, you know, you can get nine to 12 months uh, of, of kind of benefits out of it. And some patients, uh, you know, we always tell the, the, the doctors, you, you do the third treatment, bring the patient back after 30 days, after that third treatment, do the same round of tests, do your tear breakup time, look at all the scoring, look at the OSDI, and then decide if you do a fourth treatment. There's no harm in doing a fourth treatment and a lot of patients uh, you know, you'll do the fourth treatment as well. And it uh, it really shows kind of extending that benefits out. Based on the severity of the patient's dry eye disease and their MGD, um, you know, right now the EI device is technically used, like you just mentioned, three sessions. So day mm -hmm. one, typically day 15, and then day 45. Um, can you do those treatments? Is it beneficial to do those treatments earlier for like the more severe dry eyes or is everyone kind of receiving the exact same treatment schedule no matter their severity yeah so i i haven't seen any changes in 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 kind of that protocol i would say mm -hmm. um you know there's always a few days here or there depending on scheduling right but uh, mm -hmm. many all the patients there's no kind of different uh, protocol based on your severity. So you keep okay. the same, that same day, day one, day 15, day 45. Yeah. And then I would say some, some patients, maybe you'll add on a, 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 a fourth treatment kind of 30 days after that, that third one. And, uh, and you, you know, depending on how they come out after that third one, you may want to do another one and see if it, if it does improve from there. Okay. So should preservative-free artificial tears, heated masks, and omega supplementation still be used during the treatment in order to get optimal results? Or I would say, yeah, I would, I would say it's with any treatment, those, those kind of things are good, right? That's like the brushing of the teeth every day. You want to keep using that, those kind of tears when you need them. And it may be only when you need them instead of on a regular basis. You may not need them as much. Uh, the lid wipes and uh, and uh, kind of the mask is always a great thing to do. I think, um, you know, the lid wipes is really just going to keep those glands clean, uh, you know, keep the blepharitis if there is down. If there is Demodex, you can use the tea tree oil wipes. That's going to keep that in check. So all those things are, are good to keep doing at the same time as doing any treatment. Omegas, you know, continuously, it's only going to extend those benefits out and kind of maintain the the kind of uh, well-being in the ocular surface from that side. And and like a preservative free drop like I drop MGD perfect for patients that are doing this type of a, a treatment because it does have that lipid layer um, and will kind of enhance the lipid layer, bring everything together and 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 kind of uh, help out anything anything to do with MGD. Um so Blair getting back to IPL um, so IPL is known to improve skin texture and tone and reduce fine lines and skin uh, discoloration along with improving dry eye signs and symptoms. So does IRPL offer these particular cosmetic benefits as well? Yeah, absolutely. They, we call them side effects in this, uh, in this case. So you get the side effects of improved uh, kind of skin, reducing fine lines and wrinkles. Uh, that mode of action is, is very similar if it's an IRPL or IPL. So you're getting, you're getting those kind of side effect benefits, uh, if you want to call them uh, from from the IRPL as well. Okay. You know, um, I was going to mention that actually right now that just came up to my mind. So after my second IRPL treatment, 
I did. Don't know- say you're going to like, you lost wrinkles or something. No. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like my wrinkle, the youngest one. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, even my fiance was like, your skin looks like it's really brightened. And I, mm. I, I had no idea. I just didn't even think about the IRPL. And I was like, no, I haven't. Ch- I mean, I've been wearing sunscreen. I was like, maybe. <laughs> But now that you mentioned that, yeah, because my under eyes were not as dark actually after the second session. I think our listeners will definitely appreciate like our reviews because they're like, we are pretty, we're very honest with our reviews, right? Even though we did receive the IRPL treatments at no cost, um, thankfully to IMED Pharma, but um, Deepon's experience um, that everyone will listen to at the next episode where we go into a lot more detail as to why we felt this way and how, but um. Deepon's dryness was pretty mild. So she did get really good benefits. And mm-hmm. I think for me, my dry eye symptoms are caused. It's very multifactorial too. There's so. <laughs> that is dry eye, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? That you is a definition. dry eye without multifactorial, like, right? So if you open up the textbook on dry eye and all the, the etiologies, like every single one you just check off and I have like 10 of them. So right. I, the IRPL definitely, um, I felt I felt changes, just not long term, but it like the changes that I felt. I mean, they're definitely there. Uh, they're definitely there. But um, uh, well, but good point because this is not like you have to, you have to be an MGD patient for this to yeah, be, to get yeah, benefit. Somebody with yeah. somebody with aqueous deficiency or like yeah. problems with their their lacrimal gland, it's not it's not going to solve that problem. Yeah. And that's, like it's, it's really very clearly pressed after that treat the second treatment. I was like, Whoa, I'm so moisturized right now. I, I can't feel my eyelids. Like they're, it's so nice, but I'm mm. not really, um, MGD is not really my main issue. Abs- and so the benefits weren't as long lasting, but I'm really looking forward to the third treatment. So yeah, absolutely. Like, like it's super important to with any treatment, doesn't matter what it is, yeah. is really make sure that treatment is targeted for the patient's symptoms exactly. and signs. And, and that's super important because this device is really targeted. It's specific yeah. for MGD. It's really to get those glands working again and, and, and have that, that kind of mode of action. It's, yeah. it's not going to be there for, it's not going to start your, your tear production. You know, that's, yeah. there's lots of other devices that, that kind of will, will do that in terms of our drugs or different things like that. So, you know, you have to really make sure you're, when you're, when you're recommending it to somebody, you have to really make sure that you, you go through that, that kind of, uh, you know, that I call it the fault tree, you know, my, you know, you look through and, and kind of figure out where do they fall in terms of, yep. of patients and then, okay, this is a good candidate. What if a patient has a painful sty and wants to clear it up immediately? Can one to two IRPL treatments accomplish that? Yeah. So this is something that's kind of new with IRPL and um, looking at how, um, how kind of like Chalazians and different things like that, how you can treat it. But it kind of makes sense because the, you know, one of the mode of actions that I talked about is inflammation reduction, right? So you're, you're, uh, if you're using it to kind of Chalazians and, and styes and different things like that, you're, you're trying to reduce the inflammation. You, you oftentimes use drugs to be able to do that as well. But, uh, you know, using the IRPL on that sty will, will kind of do the same benefit. And, you know, we're seeing uh, lots of different, uh, different people using it. It's not necessarily, let's call it what Health Canada has approved it for, but it, yeah. listen, uh, like it, it's working use. a little bit off label, but, mm-hmm. uh, you know, if you think about the mode of action and, and just, uh, interpret it that way, I think it's, it's a great, great use for that, uh, those type of people and those patients and a lot of patients, you know, that it's, it's a painful thing happening and they want it, you know, um, solved as quick as possible. So it's a great alternative. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Blair, thank you so much. You actually answered all of our questions that we had and more about the EI device and just what IRPL is in general, because I think, you know, a lot of people are probably seeing this all over, you know, the marketing materials, Instagram websites, and it's sometimes hard for us to really see what's the real difference between IPL and IRPL. So this talk today was um, excellent, you know, just in explaining what it does and what uh, benefits it can give to our patients. Um, Is there anything else that you want to add for our listeners to learn about IRPL that we may not have mentioned just yet? 
I think we've gone through almost everything. I, I think really the key is, is that uh, this device, the EI device, the IRPL device has been around for many years outside of Canada. So five years has great results in terms of clinical trials uh, that have been very, very robust. So when you're looking to choose, you know, a device like this for your practice to be able to help those MGD patients, I think this one is one of the best choices in terms of being able to get the results that you need uh, really f continuously. And, and um, you know, it's been proven to do so around the world. And, and now in Canada, a lot of people getting great benefits from it. Yeah, definitely. And now us too. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, I'm glad, there, I'm glad Before you, you go, I actually yeah. have one question. Um, sorry to add it in last minute, but sure. um, just wanted to know what are some like main contraindications for somebody that can get IRPL? Yeah, so I would just say in terms of the, um, the you know, you want to just make sure the Fitch factor sale, they're, they're inside the, the kind of yeah. extreme end is you're not, not able to do that with any IRPL, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Um, and then other than that, it's, uh, there are some, some drug contraindications in terms of drugs that, um, that do, uh, do create uh, kind of enhance, you know, um, like the uh, anti-anxiety, like, I know, um, anti, some anti-anxiety drugs were on it, um, Correct. Yeah. In terms of like their photo, uh, photosensitive, think, um, yeah, photosensitive yeah. drugs as well. Yeah. So you need to just, just you know, a lot of times it's it's talking with uh, with the GP or whoever it is mm -hmm. that that prescribe those to make sure that it's okay or um, going off of those type of things for a little bit if they need to. Um, you can you can find out as well. Yeah. Uh, just like retinol. You know, mm -hmm. you don't want to have retinol on the skin when you're doing it, but you can you can definitely just not have it on uh, that day or a day before mm -hmm. and, and go about doing it. Um, but things like that, it's, it's very minor. I mean, in terms of the uh, the uh, contraindications and the EI is extremely safe, uh, you know, very, very low risk of, of burning the skin or anything like that. Mm -hmm. A lot of the IPL devices were designed for um, dermatology use originally and a lot higher um, kind of output of uh, energy so you really need to make sure that you have the dial set properly whereas the mm -hmm. EI is very very simple to set it's uh, you know there's uh, basically select the select the skin type and you go so it's it's yeah. super simple from that side I don't know if you guys notice that when you're yeah. using it it's really easy to get trained on uh, yeah. you don't need to necessarily uh, you can have, you know, a lot of the staff doing this as well. It doesn't mm -hmm. need to be. Uh, talk a lot somebody. about this. Um, don't say more, Blair, because I... <laughs> the listeners have to listen to our next episode on this because we do speak with Terrence from iMed Pharma, who goes more into detail about how you can actually obtain this device, how you can start implementing it in your practice, how much you can charge for the treatments how you can train your staff, how you can market all of this um, for your clinic, your website. Um, we go, and then we go into real details about our personal experience um, about it. So yeah, don't say more. I'm going to cut you off right great. <laughs> segue. Great segue to the next episode. So stay yeah. tuned, everybody. <laughs> yes. But thank you again, Blair, for yeah. coming on. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. This was fun. <laughs>